12 on our 40 day tour through the Gospel of John and today things are really picking up. In just 21 verses, our Bible reading for today, John 6 verses 1 to 21, we're going to cover two of the seven signs in John's Gospel. The book of signs, most Bible scholars refer to the front half of John's Gospel as the book of signs and it covers seven miracles, seven the number for a full cycle or biblical perfection. So far, Jesus has turned water into wine, then he heals two sick people, that signs or miracles one, two, and three. And now, in just these 21 verses, we're going to have two signs, and they're relatively familiar miracle stories, even for people who don't know the Bible that well. Jesus feeds 5,000 people with just five loaves of bread and two fish. That's the first miracle, or the fourth sign in John's Gospel. And then he walks on water on the Sea of Galilee, the second sign, or fifth miracle in John's Gospel. So let's unpack those and, and apply those to, to where we live, because not only is John telling the story of these miracles and these signs and what happened, he's also, as usual, uh, coloring in all sorts of things so that this story can come to life for us all the more. And the more we know, the closer we grow to the true identity of who Jesus is. And that's important in John's gospel. John wants to make sure we know. When I was a little boy, my brothers and I uh, and my mom and dad, we would pack into the old Ford Galaxy 500 with the, with the uh, tent trailer on the back hitch, and we'd go from KOA campground to KOA campground. Some of those drives out in the western United States were pretty long uh, on our way from campground to campground as we were on these family vacations. And so my dad would play this game with us where he'd merge together, like I spy with 20 questions and a bunch of other things. And he would say, okay, I see something. And now boys, my two brothers and I, you have to guess what it is. And we had a total of 20 questions. And of course you wanted to be the one who ultimately dis discovered what it was that, that your dad saw. So you could say you won. So it would start, one of my brothers would say, well, uh, is it the tree over on the other side of the road? And my dad would say, well, no, but you're, um, you're, you're, you're kind of warm. And then somebody else would guess. He said, well, you're getting warmer or you're getting colder. You always wanted to hear you're getting warmer. And eventually you wanted him to hear, you, hear my dad say, you're getting hot. I mean, you're boiling hot. You're so close because you knew you were so close to getting it right. That's what's going on here in John chapter 6. It's not just the miracles and the signs themselves, the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus walking on water. It's the way people respond. They're getting warmer. I'm going to let you read through these stories. You, you know the rhythm of them, the, the perspective, and, and how John always lifts that up. There isn't any wasted words or phrases in John's gospel. And so we either see things as John wants us to as he writes this gospel from an unlimited perspective of heaven or from the limited perspective of this earth. And, and, and John's gospel is trying to lift us up so that we can see our world from Jesus' perspective. So when the disciples don't have enough food to feed the huge crowds of people, the 5,000 men plus women and children, they're seeing it from a worldly perspective, which is where most of us live and where most of us would see it. But Jesus comes along and in order to test Philip, one of his disciples, he says, well, where can we go to, to buy all the bread that we need, all the food that we need to feed this crowd? And Philip said, even if we could find that much food, we don't have enough money. So there's another reason, limited boundaries of this world. But when you're with Jesus, there are no limits. And so that's a question for you today. Are you with Jesus? How many limits do you have? What, what do you believe? And remember how important belief is in John's gospel. It's also worth noting that it's Passover time. John's going to mention Passover three times. And each of those three times, it's going to pull out one of the keys toward identifying Jesus. You're getting warmer. If you remember from yesterday's episode, the three keys leading up to Jesus saying, I'm the main point of the whole Bible, are that Jesus does miracles, brings new life to old in this world. Jesus is resurrection hope for eternal life in heaven. And Jesus has the authority to grant these blessings upon us. He's the one who sits on the throne in the kingdom of God forever. Well, every time John mentions the Passover, the three times in his gospel, one of those three things is going to be going on. 
Jesus flips the tables. In John 2, he has the authority to sit on the throne and flip those tables. Jesus performs a great miracle here in John 6. He has the authority to do that too, brings new to old. And at the end of the Gospel of John, the Passover is mentioned for the third time. And that's where Jesus brings the resurrection hope into our world. There are no accidents in John's Gospel. There are no throwaway phrases or even words. And so when the Bible says that Jesus is testing Philip and then Andrew comes up and says, and is seeing again from a worldly perspective saying, well, I found a young boy who has five loaves of bread and two fish. So you start to think, oh, Andrew, you get it. You're getting warmer. You're getting hot, boiling hot. You know who Jesus is. You're going to bring him the five loaves of bread and the two fish and he's going to do another miracle. But then Andrew follows that up with back down to earth. But of course, what good is five loaves of bread and two fish to us, Andrew says. You you were getting warmer, Andrew. Now you're getting cold, ice cold. What about you today? How much room do you have in your life today to let the unlimited nature of Jesus Christ break through into the limited boundaries of your world? Because that's a big part of why these signs are happening and and the big part of why John is telling the stories in this way. So Jesus takes the bread, the five loaves of bread and the fish, and he gives thanks to God for them. And then he distributes them to the crowd, probably through his disciples, if we're putting the other gospel accounts together with this one. But here's the cool part, the miracle part of the story. It says that all the crowd ate as much as they wanted. And then they were full, the Bible says in John 6, and they had 12 baskets left over. Again, no wasted numbers in John's gospel, 12 representing the 12 disciples, one basket for each disciple left over. Our cup overflows, or the 12 tribes of Israel in the Old Testament. Also worth noting in John's Gospel that this chapter of the Gospel, John chapter 6, is really kind of the New Testament version of the central story of the Old Testament in Exodus. Because as God's people are wandering through the wilderness in Exodus, God provides manna from heaven for them. They don't have a place to get food. They're going to go hungry should sound familiar to the context of this story. There's a crowd of thousands, a huge crowd, John's Gospel says at the beginning of John 6. And they have no place to get bread and they couldn't afford it if they could. God provides. God provides through Jesus Christ. He is the manna from heaven. We'll find out as we go through this chapter, he is the bread of life. Hold that thought though until tomorrow. For now, it's the miracle itself, it's the sign itself, and it's the response. It's the reaction of his disciples. They're getting warmer. When Jesus feeds the crowd, the crowd says this, according to John chapter 6, verse 14. Clearly, absolutely, the crowd says, he is the prophet that we were expecting. You're getting warmer. I mean, you're getting really warm now. He is the prophet who, for hundreds of years, for centuries, God has declared through these prophets that there is this Messiah, this this anointed one who's coming into the world. They're getting warmer, but they don't have it yet. And here's why. Because it's the prophet they expected, John 6, 14 says. Well, the prophet they expected was like a King David. Somebody who would conquer Israel's enemies. Somebody who would overthrow the powers that that existed that were oppressing God's people. They were getting warmer, but they weren't there yet because Jesus was more than King David. Jesus was more than Moses. Jesus is the bread of life. Then we shift to the second miracle here in these 21 verses and the fifth sign in John's Gospel. It's Jesus walking on water. Which, of course, just reminds us in the storms of our daily life and the things that we're up against. How do we see them? Through the limited boundaries of this world or the unlimited nature of the one who is with us always, Jesus Christ. The one who can walk on water. When the disciples saw Jesus walking on water, John chapter 6, verses 18 and 19, it says in verse 19, they were terrified. So Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. I'm here. You're getting warmer. You'll see it. And blessed are your eyes to see what you get to see and your ears to hear what you get to hear. You're getting warmer. I hope you are too as we go through this Gospel of John. As you read about these signs, these these miracles of Jesus, as you start to recognize and realize the movement of John's Gospel, this literary masterpiece, but most of all, 
as you focus on the unlimited capacity of Jesus Christ and his ability to bring that into the limited boundaries of this world that we live in. Follow him. We'll pick it up there tomorrow. Please like, review, and share on whatever platform you're using that helps us get the word out. And join us for weekend worship. You can go to lutheranchurchofhope.org to find out how. We'll see you there. Bye.